what is good guys it's ray j back with another video and in this one we'll break down what's going on with spy test of the qqq and a couple of tickers out there i'm going to talk about what catalysts are coming out for this week that will affect the markets and also what's going on with the data that's going to be released as well before i break anything down about all this information give you guys a very quick update video i do have to mention a couple of things real quick firstly i am not a financial planner so take none of this as financial advice and also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And finally, don't forget about the Weeble link. The offer ends very soon. If you deposit any amount of money, whether it's $1 or $100, it's up to you. You're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends very soon, so check it out before they run out. With that set up the way, let's get on with the video. SPY was up 0.12% for the day, getting a very, very boring day. This thing came down in the morning, came right back up as the day went on. It managed to close a little bit in the green, up only 0.12%. Very, very sideways and boring. Not really much happened so far. And then looking at many other stocks out there, the majority of stocks in the markets kind of followed this trend from like NVIDIA and just a couple of others. But Tesla did see more volatility, so did NEO and just a few of the other stocks out there. We saw lots of small caps in action for today as well, but most of them were still, most of the other stocks besides those were just still pretty flat. So let's break down what's going on with the markets. Just to remind you all, the market is going to be closed for the 4th of July. It's going to be a U.S. national holiday. It's going to be an awesome day. So please enjoy the 4th of July. Market's going to be closed. We'll be back in action on Wednesday. Just to remind everyone, for Wednesday, we have some data coming out. We have the economic optimism report at 10 o'clock a.m. I should be ready in the morning to update you guys on how this is going. No guarantees, though, because the stock market opens at like 6.30 a.m. for me. I'd have to wake up like at 5.30 if I want to record any videos or even earlier than that, I usually wake up at like 4.55 a.m. Uh, but anyways, uh, when I do wake up, uh, I, I can't promise you I'm going to be able to wake up after the 4th of July because where I live, people just light up so many fireworks and they could be going on all night. So who knows if I'll be able to wake up. I should be able to. I'll do my best too anyways. But regardless of what happens, just I want you guys to know that we have some data coming out at about 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. We have the economic optimism report. And then we have the FOMC minutes, and that's going to be very important for the market. Now, the problem with this for the bulls is you have to remember that the Fed has been quite hawkish lately. And the FOMC minutes is like the FOMC meeting on paper. And we're basically going to see more transcripts, more information about what the other Fed members are thinking, what they want to do with monetary policy. When we get the FOMC meeting that's normal, we have Jerome Powell speaking. He's the main guy out there. Well, there's so many other Fed speakers too, so many other Fed members who are a part of the committee. And that's important because we're going to get more insights from them as soon as Wednesday at 2 o'clock p.m. When the data comes out, it's going to let us know more information about what the Fed is going to do. And this is going to have a big effect on the markets. Now, the thing to remember is that the majority of the Fed speakers have been saying that they want more rate hikes. And then many of the Fed members during the latest FOMC meeting, they voted on that as well. Another rate hike to come in the future, actually multiple rate hikes, especially because the market is still showing some strength and the overall economy going forward. Uh, the thing about that is when you look at this data, for example, like if you look at construction spending and some other factors, it's actually up even hotter than expected. We also have more data out there showing that the jobs market is starting to show signs of unemployment going up, but it still is not to the levels that the Fed is wanting. And inflation is taking a little bit longer on the core side than what Jerome Powell and many of these Fed members want. So remember last week when uh, we had the Fed speakers coming and we had Jerome Powell speaking. Like during this period, we actually saw the market correct quite a bit and it corrected even more because of when Jerome Powell was giving those speeches and like all these other Fed speakers came. We saw SPY drop quite a bit before this thing started to rebound during the final days before it got that monstrous rally approaching the end of the week last week. So it was very interesting to witness. And now I just want to mention that we have to be careful because uh, the Fed members could be more hawkish and this could cause a slowdown in the market it's a real possibility it's a real risk i just wanted to inform you all about this besides that there's not much else going on in the news or for the markets i mean we have janet yellen going to china she's going to be discussing policy changes and we do have some news involving like ai but nothing is too major right now for the collective markets uh, let me also add that we have lots of earnings coming out in the future over the next couple of weeks big earnings are coming we have tesla in just like two weeks i think we have apple in like three weeks we have huge tech earnings in just 
the upcoming weeks. For this week, however, we just have Levi's for Thursday, and that's about it. Everything else is just very minor. So just get ready. Tech earnings are going to dictate whether or not the market continues to pump or if the market gets a big rug pull. You have to be ready. You have to be prepared for this. Anyways, from a technical standpoint, let's now break down some charts very briefly. I want to make this kind of quick because the weekend is coming. Uh, for SPY, we have this very beautiful looking cup and handle that ended up playing out quite nicely. And it does look like there's a potential bullish triangle that is still developing on this thing, which means there could be more upside coming. My only problem with saying that is the fact that I'm not going to be as confident with just technicals because once again, we have the FOMC minutes coming out on Wednesday when the market opens again. And who knows what's going to happen then? I would rather just be very uh, careful and very conscious of what they could cause and it's very hard to predict sometimes sometimes the market gets a big rug pull and pal speaks other times it doesn't do that so it, it's very tricky to predict and they use these events to trick a lot of people i mean if you look at what the market does there are going to be lots of fake outs approaching these events they trick a lot of retail into doing certain things such as buying or selling at a certain time to cause the opposite to happen at a different you know, point in time. So there are going to be a lot of fake outs that happen on Wednesday. So you have to be ready for this. And it's very difficult for me to predict solely based off that. But from a technical standpoint, just based off technicals alone, the market is still showing some strength. We do have a negative divergence on the MACD as the market is continuing to uptrend and hold up, but the MACD is starting to downtrend. Uh, the RSI is also starting to that just a little bit, but the RSI is not as impactful from that manner compared to the MACD. And then on the four hour time frame, if you look at SPY, uh, we are seeing this thing curling a bit. There is technically a bearish divergence that has developed. You can see it on the RSI right over here. It's not on the MACD. Actually, it technically is on the MACD. It's also on the RSI on the signal line. Uh, so it's still developing right now. There's no true signal of this playing out. So there is a chance we might see a small correction as soon as Wednesday because of the FOMC minutes. Uh, I'm leaning a little bit more in that direction, but like I said, guys, I wish I could predict it, but I really can't because I'm not a genie. I don't know exactly what they're going to say, but I'll tell you this, okay? If you're watching the trend, if you're a bull on SPY, you need to see this thing break above 445. If that happens, we could see 447.5 come. Uh, this would also translate to a higher level on SPX, by the way. Uh, but if, if it's not good, you're going to be watching... 442 and then 440 as major supports. 440 especially. If that one breaks, there's going to be more downside coming into like the high 430s, maybe even all the way down to like 435 potentially. But 440 is going to be the breaking point. If that breaks, there could be more downside coming. Uh, I'm not saying it's a crash or anything like that, just a very healthy pullback. I am leaning more in that direction that the market may correct because of the FOMC minutes, but just to be safe, I'm not promising it, and just watch for the confirmation. To turn bullish, watch this thing break 445. To turn more bearish, watch it break below 442. And if that breaks, watch 440. That's going to be the key level. For Tesla, this is also developing a bearish divergence now. It actually changed just intraday. Because when you zoom out of the chart, we had to wait for close to get any confirmation. Now, even though Tesla is a great company, they had some very, very strong developments. The thing about Tesla is it pumped pretty hard. It's actually up 7%. But the thing is, it's still getting used to this new territory being above this level. Because when you look at the daily on Tesla, this is the highest we've seen Tesla in many, many months since like early, actually for the entire year, I believe this is the highest we've ever seen Tesla for all of 2023. Tesla's making a new high for the year. So that's the reason why this thing is uh, in this new territory in a way. And it's going to need a little bit more time to really break out of this, right? At first, it was looking like this thing could have broken to like 286. Sorry about that, guys. To get very close to 285 to 286, basically. It came just a little bit short and started to slow down just a little bit close, just below 280. So now... I just want to mention that it's important that we look at this from a different standpoint. So looking at the four hour time frame on Tesla, there is a bearish divergence that has developed. It, we got confirmation of it by the time the market closed. You can see it on all of our different technical indicators on our MACD, our RSI, even the stochastic technically shows. I don't really use the stochastic for that, but it, it could be used that way if you want. I mean, it really depends on if it works. It could work. Uh, but the bottom line is, this is looking like Tesla might come down a bit because of the FOMC minutes. That could be one of the causes, could be something else. So you're going to be watching 276 as our major support and also the low of the day, like that 275 to 276 area as support. If that breaks, it's going to come all the way down to 270. And if that breaks, there's 268, then potentially this entire gap fill area after that. Now, I don't 
want to promise that's going to happen, right? Those are just your confirmation levels, especially like 270, a break below that would be, would be a more bearish uh, development. But I'm just saying this because the technicals are suggesting Tesla could reverse. And it's also because of the Fed. The Fed could come in and just get in the way of this rally. And even if Tesla does cool off a little bit, I think Tesla has a lot of potential to push up very hard later on because earnings comes out in just two weeks and maybe earnings could cause this thing to pump or it could have pump up approaching earnings to get closer to $300 later on. So the point I'm trying to make is Tesla could pump more in the medium term, but for the short term, it may need to cool off just a little bit first before that happens. All right. So for the QQQ, now this thing is still looking good compared to like SPY in a way because... This has this nice inverse head and shoulder structure. It's still playing out nicely. I'm going to close the stochastic so you can see this better. So the beautiful looking inverse head and shoulder. I don't know if this thing is about to just come down first and then try to pump up to this like 372.8 area or if it's going to go straight up first and then it ends up dropping. It's going to be one of those two. Either it drops first and then it pumps or it pumps first and then it drops. Uh, I'm leaning uh, either direction. It, it just depends on the FOMC minutes, but I just wanted to note this so you guys are prepared. For NVIDIA, this is also looking more bullish to me from an inverse head and shoulder standpoint, also because of a cup and handle. But it's looking like it's losing some momentum for the short term. So for the short term, NVIDIA could come down. For the medium term, for the next couple of trading days going into next week, I could see NVIDIA trying to balance and continue pushing. I think the FOMC minutes may cause this to slow down looking at the current MACD. Uh, not a guarantee. I'm just noting it just based off this trend. It is losing some momentum right now. So we'll have to wait and see on it. But I'm just telling you what I think is most probable based off this current trend. We could get a retest of this like 416 to 410 area. It may just drop a tiny bit and then try to bounce after that. And then after it retests that, it could start pushing all the way back up to about 440, which is where this top resistance would be for the inverse head and shoulders. For Microsoft, this thing came a little bit down. It's about to get, <coughs> excuse me, sorry guys. It's about to get a bearish cross on the PPO. So you're going to be watching the 336 area as major support on the four hour time frame. It if it breaks below this, watch this thing test 332, then potentially 330. There's about to be a bearish cross on the PPO, so just be careful with that. Uh, maybe the FOMC minutes get in the way and cause this to just cool off a little bit and then it bounces later on. That's a real possibility, but we'll just have to wait and see. Also, earnings are coming out in just a couple of weeks. That's going to be huge. AMD still looks pretty decent because it's getting very close to our 118 target with this accumulation phase. Could this cool down because of the FOMC minutes and then pump, or is it going to pump first? I don't really know for sure. Uh, we're going to see which way it breaks. If it breaks 117, it's going to push all the way up to the 118s, 118 to 119, which is where this imbalance is. If it breaks down, if it gets below our 50 EMA, below this like 113, uh, it's 113.74 like basically if it breaks below that we're going to be watching 111 or even lower than that so the bottom line is i mean it's looking like an accumulation right now it looks more bullish than bearish but it could cool down first and then try to push up or push up and then cool off after i'm not sure which direct which one it's going to be but i'm leaning the direction that it may cool off first and then start pushing up but we do have these imbalances to get filled later on so maybe it cools off because of the minutes just a little bit, retest like 113 or so, then it starts pushing up later on to get to like 120 or even like the higher levels up here. Those are also possibilities. I'm going to talk about just Coinbase and just a few others and end the video from here just to make it quick because it is once again a holiday. It's almost time for the holiday to start for a lot of people. Uh, Coinbase did something kind of surprising. It's thinking to me to rip to the upside. Very, very nice move to 80 dollars but the question is will this thing continue going there is a bearish divergence developing right now could this thing cool off and retest like 75 or so and then try to bounce that's a real possibility but one thing i want to note is that when you zoom out of the chart we have these important levels around this 84 to 85 area these are very very important especially these imbalances i think it's going to try to make its way up to 84 now there are two possibilities okay Either this thing is going to cool off because of the FOMC minutes. I can't really predict that. I, I just don't know what's going to happen with them exactly. That could cause some downside and a retest of like 75, then a balance, then a push up to 84 later on. Or it goes all the way up to 84. It completes the bearish divergence, and then it starts to drop afterwards, right? So it goes up to 84, then it drops, or it drops first, then it goes up to 84. It's got to be one of those two. You're going to be watching for confirmation just to see which way it goes. If it breaks above 81, it's going to likely push up to 84. If it breaks below 77.9, it's going to come all the way down, most likely to like 75, and then try to bounce. Those are your confirmation levels. Watch them carefully. 
for Apple, uh, Apple's once again downtrending, about to get a bearish cross in the four hour. This is why I'm talking about some possible downside because Apple's starting to look a little bit weaker. And Apple had this bearish divergence like right here that technically developed. Uh, you can see on the MACD more clearly than the RSI. Uh, it's starting to lose some momentum. I could see this thing come all the way back down to 190, but like I said before, uh, we'll see what the FOMC minutes cause first. I, I don't know if they're going to cause this thing to bounce in the ops direction or if it's going to just continue dropping. But it looks a little bit more bearish. It looks like it needs to cool off on the RSI just a bit because it was overbought. And it might make its way all the way down to about that 190 support. If 190 fails to hold, we do have this gap down here on the daily to take it all the way down to like one, uh, one, the 189 to 188.5 support after that. That's a possibility. But just for confirmation, see if this thing could hold these levels. If it breaks below 191.5, it's going to likely come all the way down to 189 to 190. So that's going to be another important level. And we'll see what happens to Apple. It is looking a little bit weaker now. It's just trying to cool off a bit. This could slow the market down. So just be very, very careful. Other than that, most of what I said in the morning for my video when I talked about like meta and et cetera are basically the same. Meta is trading sideways. For meta to turn bullish, we have to break 290 to be very bullish on it. If not, there's a bullish triangle, so that's looking good. But if it fails to do so, I break below 85, and I'd be watching the four-hour time frame, uh, the 50 EMA at 282 as our support. So watch that very carefully. We're kind of stuck between the 50 EMA and then like the 290 resistance. Watch it just basically go back and forth. That's all it's really doing for now. It's kind of stuck, but it is still full of potential. So anyways, thank you all so much for listening. Just know that tomorrow is going to be the 4th of July. The market's closed and we'll be back in action for Wednesday. Watch the pouring resistance. Um, I do believe that there is an increased probability of some downside for the market. It's just a small little pullback, very healthy, nothing too major because of some bearish possible signals, which are in the process of developing. They haven't fully developed, so we don't have true confirmation on everything yet. The one of the tickers that's getting close to getting it is like Apple, but it's just a possibility and there's an increased possibility of the market cooling off a bit. And you also have to remember that we have the FOMC minutes. Most of those Fed speakers have been quite hawkish, so I would be careful. Also, the Fed members of the committee. So I just want to note that. With that said, thank you all so much for listening. Have an absolutely spectacular rest of the day. Enjoy the weekend and I'll see you guys very soon for the next video. The market to the moon is long term is still incredibly bright and peace out.